Hey, in today's video, I want to talk about the latest buzzword that we have in the world of product management, product sense. Many people equate product sense to the ability that certain people seem to have to launch successful products repeatedly. But is this product sense some kind of sixth sense that those successful product managers have? Is this some kind of a magical trick that they can pull off repeatedly to have launch several successful products? Or is this based on something else? Is there something more tangible that is going to help you to actually launch products or actually uh, have products that have been successfully adopted by users? Let's go through what are going to be the criteria for having successful products and then discuss if product sense is something special or it's just something that has been around us for a long time. So first of all, when you talk about your ability to create successful products, there's going to be several things that are going to help you to create those successful products. The first one and probably the most important one is being customer centric. You had to understand your customers. You had to understand the problems they have. You had to talk with them in a regular basis. It is not possible to create successful products if you only talk a couple of times per year with your customers. You're going to be completely detached from them. You're not going to understand them. You're not going to have empathy for the problems they have. And by empathy, of course, there might be feelings involved, but I understand that you, that I want to split, or I want to mean that you put yourself into the shoes of the customer, that you can relate to the problems they have. And this way, you are going to be able to find solutions in a better way. And not only putting yourself into their shoes is that when you're building those products, when you're building prototypes, you are working with them to validate them, to give them give, so they give feedback to you and actually test and make sure that this is solving those problems they have. The next aspect that is going to make you a successful product manager or for that matter, a product designer or even a product marketing could apply to this description is that you are going to be able, once you have identified those problems, to identify what are the solutions for these problems. And again, this is not a silo work. This is something that you have to work with those customers and you have to work in an iterative way to actually discover the solutions. Your first solutions probably are going to be rough. They're going to be more like MVPs and over time, they are going to get better. Depends on your release process, depends on how you build products. This can be built into the process of development and sometimes it will be happening in a way that you build something, release it, get feedback, iterate, improve, release, get feedback, and so on. There are many different ways of doing this. There is not a single uh, perfect one. There are different ways that are going to help you and that they are actually going to get you to that or discovering that solution that your customers need and that is going to solve the problems they have. The next aspect that is going to help you build successful products is that you have a goal, that you have a vision and that you understand what are the strategic components to get there. How do you do this? Again, talk with your customers, understand them better. Once you understand what problems they have, that is going to give you an understanding what that solution can be. You might understand the first steps of the solution and then you start to foresee, where's the solution taking me in the future? Think about what Amazon did in the past. Amazon in the beginning was just selling books. What they sell nowadays? Well, not everything, but almost. They sell a lot of things and there's not only other online stores that can do what Amazon does. Not at this level, at this point, at least. In the future, different story. But that means that when they were starting to solve the problem of uh, selling pro uh, books to the people that wanted to purchase them, they probably already had a vision of where they wanted to be. Tesla is another good example. Tesla knew from very beginning where they wanted to be in the long term. And they also built a strategy to get there. And part of the strategy was start selling very expensive cars that have a very high ROI. So they actually are very highly profitable products 
with that profit that they get, they can reinvest in the company and increase production in, or go one level lower, build a, a still expensive car, but less expensive car like the Model S that is still highly profitable. And you can see that over time they have been building cheaper cars. And this is something that they have been doing all the way until they started to build the Model 3, which is not yet the affordable car that they want to build, but it's going that direction. And you can see that this is part of the strategy. And there are more strategic areas that Tesla and also Amazon have solved over time. So in a nutshell, having a vision, having a strategy is going to give you that path that you're going to have to take to get to your goal. And identify what are those roadblocks, those very big challenges that are going to have, that I'm going to have to develop my product. And those are going to be your strategic areas. The fourth aspect to be a successful product person is that you have to have the ability to prioritize. Probably many of us have seen people, maybe even ourselves, prioritizing based on what we have heard most recently. The latest buzzword, the latest uh, most talk thing in the office. But is that realistically what your customers need? Because some people are talking about a certain area in the office or that you have assumptions that this is the new trend where everything is going to go in the future. That doesn't make it the most important thing. You have to be able to talk with your customers. You have to be able to identify those problems with them. And from there, be able to prioritize. This is going to be very important to also prioritize against your strategic goals and against your vision. So if your vision, for example, with Amazon was to build the biggest um, one online store, that is the main goal. They could also sell in physical shops, but that's not a way that they decided to do things at that point. That could still, to a certain degree, align with what they are trying to do. They could have sold books in, in just uh, physical stores, brick and mortar stores, but the reality is that they didn't do it. Why? Because it was not part of the strategy. Your strategy is also going to help you to say no to certain uh, potential ideas. And this is how you will prioritize and actually build your roadmaps. And finally, you also have to understand that the success of one of your products doesn't mean that you have been the key to that success. It's very easy to understand that. We have worked in a successful product, has launched, we have achieved a hockey stick, we are starting to sell a lot, it grow exponentially. This is an amazing feeling, but the reality is that there might be a combination of aspects that have gotten you there. There can be just pure luck, coincidence, something happens and then your product becomes mandatory and something that you didn't control or you couldn't foresee. It can be also that uh, your team is really good and you've done it or you achieved success because of that. And it might be that you have done a great job, so awesome thumbs up. But the next time that you build a product doesn't mean that you know everything. You have to go through the whole journey again. You have to again understand your customers. You have to again work with them to identify the solutions, build the strategies, build vision, be able to prioritize ruthlessly against those strategies and visions and those needs that those customers have. Once you have done this, then you are actually going to be successful. And also understand that the knowledge that you have sometimes from one product is not always going to be necessarily transferable to another product. For example, especially if you think about B2C products compared to B2B products, so business to consumer or business to business products, sometimes the differences are quite big. If you have been successful building business or B2C products, it might be that when you go to a B2B product, not all the principles, not all the ideas, let's say, are going to work. In most of the cases, most of the principles are going to work, but you have to understand the problem, you have to understand the industry. It's going to be quite different usually from what you have been doing in the past as a B2C person. The same goes on the other way around. You might have been very successful building B2B products, but the reality is that when you go to B2C products, the needs or what you had to satisfy from the customers is 
probably quite different from what you have had to do when you were working in B2B products. So what do I think about Product Sense? Is Product Sense something new? Well, no. Realistically, launching successful products has happened before. Be way before people talk about product sense, way before people talk about product management. Umbrellas have been around for, I don't know, <laughs> hundreds of years probably. They still are used and they still basically have not changed. They serve a purpose, they do it really well, gives value to the people that are using them. That's a successful product. It brings value to the customers. That's what you want to do with your product. So is product sense something that is a must? Well, yeah, but the same as it's a must having been an experienced product manager. And by experienced product manager, I don't mean that you have done product management over years for like tens of years or 10, 15, 20 years. That's not experience in product management, at least not in my book. If you are experienced or an expert product, management, product manager, let's call it that way, then what you are saying basically is that you have been successfully working on products, products that have bring or have brought value to the customers. This is what product management expertise is all about, product management seniority, whatever you want to call it. You want to call it product science? Well, we can call it that now, but it, doesn't change the fact that this means that you are really good at doing product management. But anyway, what do you think? Do you think that product sense is really a thing? Do you think that I have the best definition or do you think that it's actually something else what defines product sense? Please comment below and let us know because we might all learn something new. And always let's have a civilized discussion in the comments below. If you like this video, I actually have another video where I go through some of the most typical and common buzzwords used in the world of product management. If you want to see them, go check them out here. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.